Hello, I'm Dr. Aaron Immel, Medical Science Liaison with Otsuka Pharmaceutical Development and Commercialization, here with NEFU. I'm here today with Dr. Deborah Hain, who's going to discuss care coordination and patient self-management in chronic kidney disease. Dr. Hain is a board-certified nurse practitioner who has practice experience within nephrology nursing, memory disorder clinic, and hospice care. Dr. Haynes' scholarly endeavors have focused on improving health outcomes of older adults with chronic kidney disease and those with cognitive impairment, and she has authored numerous peer-reviewed publications on these topics. Her current research interests are strategies to improve self-management in an ethically diverse population with chronic kidney disease stages 4 and 5, and supportive palliative care of older adults with CKD stages 4 and 5 and end-stage kidney disease. Dr. Haynes' teaching has focused on care of individuals with chronic diseases such as diabetes, chronic kidney disease, pulmonary disease, and cognitive impairment. So to start, Dr. Haynes, one of our big areas of interest we're discussing is care coordination, uh, specifically in patients with chronic kidney disease. So can you give us a little bit of info from your perspective why care coordination is particularly important in patients with CKD? It's very important with people with CKD because they're receiving care in many different areas, of, in, across different healthcare settings, across different providers. So to coordinate their care is that we're all working from the same page. We're all working, and the patients included in that, to address their healthcare needs. So, for example, if they're in the hospital and they're going home, what are their care needs when they go home? Many times, there's such a gap. There's a gap in care where the person is being cared for in the hospital and then for example in the dialysis center they may not know what happened in the hospital because the patient is there's poor coordination there's and the biggest problem with care coordination is communication so there's poor communication so care coordination is a way to assure that people are communicating and that the patient is involved in the decision making about the care they're going to receive in different areas of care as well as across a health care continuum and across a disease trajectory so so if someone's stage four, they have acute kidney injury, and are we, how can we help them to recover back to their, their baseline kidney function? So it's very important for us to communicate and involve the patient in this care coordination. Okay, very good. So, you know, we've seen numerous literature come out about care coordination and transitions of care, especially from the hospital to home, uh, et cetera. But with the CKD population, you gave us a little bit of why it's important for them, but what do you see as the biggest challenges in uh, the, these patients face in the coordination of their care across these different touch points? I think what can happen to them is progression of disease and increased morbidity, mortality rates. So when we're as care providers, what I've seen in my past is that 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 when we have those gaps, we're in our own silos. That we often will make judgments based on what we have. We we'll see the patient at that encounter, and we'll make a decision based on that. But we may not know the past and where the what has happened to the patient because there's been poor communication. We don't have access to medical records, and we're relying on a patient that may not remember what happened or have all the facts um, as stated. So it's very important. Important that to really improve their health outcomes, which is reducing rehospitalization and slowing the progression of kidney disease, reducing morbidity and mortality, and other other issues with psychological issues with the patient and family. That we're all talking to each other, that we're communicating through different venues. And I know that sometimes it's very challenging because we have different computers, we have different programs that don't talk to each other. So. For example, I may have Epic where I'm at, and someone else has another medical EHR, and so that, that health record doesn't communicate. And we're all very busy practices. For example, primary care providers may not, they're in a, having a very busy day, and they may not have time to call that nephrology expert and talk to that person about what's going, about a plan of care. Uh, what's the best options for this person? And so in the end, the patient suffers, and plus it's gonna cost more money Money when we're doing, we're not effectively managing the care. So if we're not, I believe that we should co-manage our patients so that primary care, 
nephrology should work together to make sure that we're addressing the needs of that person as they receive care at different areas, different um, health care settings with different providers. But somebody has to be aware of what's happening and coordinate that care so that we're not repeating measures. We're, take, we're, we're implementing the most appropriate strategies to address the issue, the health care need of that person. So in the end, if we're not, we're going to cause more, the p person may suffer, we're going to add more cost to the health care, and, and as a health care provider, I want to do the best for my patients, and so do all, I, I believe, all health care providers. So when something happens to a patient, it, it's something that we, it's upsetting to us as well. Sure. Thank you very much. Uh, that was excellent. Uh, one thing that we see, you know, when, when people think of care coordination, I think nurses immediately come to mind. Right, they play a central role in coordinating care for patients, whether or not they're officially titled as care coordinators or navigators. Uh, why do you feel that these particular providers are especially well equipped to fulfill that role and function for the patient? Well, as a nurse, uh, we often focus holistically at the pa with patients, and we're looking not just at the their disease, but how can we promote health from a physical, psychological, and well-being perspective. And we actually, I was involved in a project with American Nurses Association where we looked at the benefits and what have nurses done at all levels of nursing, RNs to advanced practice in care coordination, and what evidence supports that they can having a nurse involved can lead to. Uh, improved health outcomes for our patients. And we found many studies across many areas of nursing from adult health to pediatric health. So nurses have always played a key role in managing our patients. As you said, we may not have that title as care coordinator, but we're part of that. And nurses will often pick up the phone and call. They, will, they know how they work well with other team members, so social workers, physicians. And so we all work together to, to nurses are more apt to, to make that effort to call and it's I believe it's because of the way that we are trained as nurses to be more holistic in our approach of care. Thank you, that's very good. Now one specific aspect of patient care I know you're passionate about is, is self-management. So patients have the capability to be empowered to, to control their health care, uh, especially in CKD. Now, can you expand on that a little bit? What are some specific areas of self-management, or what does that mean when we talk about self-management in CKD care? Well, self-management is when the patient is and the person is involved in their care, and so if we and that's in shared decision making. So when we're involved in shared decision making, it is that the uh, there is a partnership together with the provider as well as that patient and family. So any partnership we all join together to make a decision. It's not I tell you what to do. It's not a patriarchal type of approach. So it's rather that I come with the expertise about, not about kidney disease management, and the person comes with expertise about self and what they can and cannot do, as well as the family members are part of that decision if the person wants them to be. So when we come in a partnership, we talk about what is the treatment of what is the problem, what is the treatment of kidney disease, and how what goals can what are realistic goals that can be established. So when we talk about self-management. What are those goals? Can the patient, you know, take your medications? Are they able to take? For example, my area of research is really medication management. So can the person manage their medications? Are they able to, act, do they have access to medications? Do they have, can they get transportation to the pharmacy? Do they have the money? Do they have the cognitive capacity to be able to take their medications? Do they understand the value of taking those medications? And that goes to an intrinsic value. So if we don't have that value, it can't be extrinsically. If we do, we give people rewards, like you've been really good and you get this, you get a prize, it's not longstanding. It'll only be short-term benefits for that. It's a longstanding, this person has to see the value of it. And so how do we do that? Is sitting down with the person and engaging in, in dialogue about treatment of disease and what is realistic for that person. What I often tell patients is I work with a really uh, wonderful nephrologist and all, all of them I, uh, that I work with, they, they're great. And I've told patients that if you sit down with the doctor and you tell the doctor, I can't do that, what you're asking me to do, then that physician thinks of another plan. It's the same for nurse practitioners. If we sit down with somebody and we say, you know, this is, what I, this is the treatment of this and let's talk about what you can do, 
that person, then they can make that decision. And what are those goals? So if we're going to lower sodium in the diet, okay, what's a realistic goal? It's not just stop sodium if that's what you have all the time. How do we realistically get to that goal that you're getting, you're getting the appropriate amount of sodium but not too much that will cause harm to you? So it's really sitting with that person, finding out what matters most to them, what are their goals. So, for example, I do a lot of kidney disease education. And I ask people what matters to most to them. If they tell me it's to get a transplant, I know that I have to think about how we're going to get to get a transplant. That's a goal right there is I want a transplant. If it's I just want to be as healthy as I can be, then that's our goal. So whatever they tell me is how I direct my education. When we sit down and then we talk about what are the goals, I have never had anybody come in and say, oh, I'm so happy to have kidney disease. Let me, let me, they don't want to have kidney disease. And the last thing they want to think about is dialysis. So how do we how do we get goals to realistic goals and to ha promote health for them and so we have to engage them i round on patients in dialysis and when i first was a dialysis nurse many years ago we i'd stand there and threaten the patient well you did this wrong you did that wrong and they'd continue in their behavior and i'd think wow well, that's not very good and they would tell me i never drank that much fluid and you knew they did so but now when I see patients, they'll stop me and say, Debbie, I, I, my phosphorus is high before I even see their labs. Why? Because I accept that we're not perfect. So we have to accept that people, any human being, is not going to be perfect. So if we don't take our medications correctly, if the patient doesn't take, how can we, what happened? And what can we do to facilitate taking the medication? So self-management is engaging in their care. They have to have the knowledge to do that, but having knowledge is one piece. If they don't have the knowledge, obviously they can't change. But knowledge doesn't change behavior. The second step is the person has to want to change. The person has want to be. So what is the value to them and what would promote them? Sometimes there's resistance because they're not ready to, to hear what you're telling them. But over time, we have to not lecture, but encourage. And the worst thing we do is label them as non-adherent, non-compliant. So people make choices. If you've given them all the information, you facilitate the ability to complete those things, to engage in self-management, then that's their decision to or not to. So how do we, we have to have, help them find, we have to understand when they're, how they're living with the disease and what, what will help them get to where they need to be. So even if I had a patient of mine who had high phosphorus in dialysis, and he said to me, no one ever tells me I'm getting closer to gold. They just tell me how bad I am. So if we have to have some way to tell the person, you're really getting there. It's just like weight loss. If I tell you you have 50 pounds to lose, and every time I come back you haven't lost the 50 pounds, you're, not, you're gonna just don't wanna come back anymore. But if I tell you, wow, you lost five pounds, you're getting five pounds, you're getting closer to that 50 pounds. So how are we taking our medications? If you're taking them, you know, that's great. And if you missed one, that's okay too, you know. So how do we help that person live with the disease, not make it a burden to them? And so engaging in self-management is very important. And it, we play a key role in supporting patients through that. Well, thank you very much, Deb, Dr. Hain. I uh, really appreciate that information. I think it'll be great for our community, and we'll look forward to hearing more from you in the future.